Hello, welcome to the ClearLine Technology Channel. Today we're going to show you how to replace an electronic part on the main PCB of the Mead LX200 Classic Telescope. It powers the telescope's two motors that control pointing and tracking of the stars, planets, and galaxies you're trying to watch or photograph. The part is an IC called the L2724, and there is one for each of the telescope's two motors. They're not made anymore, but you can find them on eBay. I put the full name you can search for in the comments below. We'll cover how they work and how to troubleshoot them in a different video. Since this telescope was made back in the 1990s and is no longer supported, you can't just take it back to the store for repair. But if you're handy with a soldering iron, you can replace the L2724 yourself. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. To start out, we're going to take off the cover plate on the bottom of the telescope by removing six screws, four around the edge and the two closest to the center. There are two other screws on the base plate, which we'll leave alone for now. With the base plate off, we can see the heart of the telescope's electronics and its main circuit board. The two L2724s are on the flat edge of the board at the top center. They're labeled on the PC board as U17 and U18. The one we'll replace today is U18, the one on the left. The two screws that we didn't remove before are holding U17 and 18 to an aluminum heat sink, and we'll need to remove that before we can get U18 detached. After the heat sink is removed, you'll want to clean up the remaining thermal paste before it gets all over everything. You'll need to reapply paste when you put things back together, so I'll leave a link to some replacement paste in the comments. We can now remove the PC board by disconnecting the two cable connectors and removing the four screws shown here. Some LX200s also have two off-board ceramic resistors glued to the inside of the base and wired to the PC board with the yellow wires we see here. We need to detach them from the base and keep them with the PC board when we take it out, taking care to not stress the wire connections to the PCB. I'm going to use the PCB from a different LX200 for the rest of this video, because the two power resistors and their wires get in the way of the action and are a distraction. With the heat sink removed, we can work much more easily and start to clip off the leads one by one. The leads are thicker when they come out of the part's plastic package and then narrow down forming a shoulder. The part is mounted so that the shoulder comes all the way down to the pad, meaning we need to try to get right at the bottom of the shoulder where there's room to insert the jaws of the cutter. It's tricky to do without damaging the pads on the PCB. We want to try to clip the lead at the narrow part just above the PCB surface, but making sure not to gouge the surface or damage the copper pads of the PCB. You'll need some snippers with a fine point, like these flush cut snippers, to get between the leads. When the leads are snipped, the part should come off with just a little wiggling. Now we just go around heating each pin with the soldering iron until the old solder melts and pull it out with tweezers. There's not enough lead left to grab onto from the top. My strategy in that case is to heat the solder and to try to push the lead through to the other side. Then flip the board over and try again. And this time there should be enough lead to grab onto on the back.
After the leads are out, we still need to get the remaining old solder out of the holes so that the new pins can fit in. I'm melting the solder in each hole, then using a pin to push the solder and any debris out. Finally, we'll clean up each hole with a solder sucker, getting all of the old solder out. Looks like no damaged holes, and they're all clear of old solder, so we're ready to insert the new part. But we'll need to do a modification to it first. The new L2724 will arrive with a straight flat heatsink tab. Since there are two of these, and they connect to the same heatsink, they need to have flat parallel surfaces at the same height and angle. We'll make a simple bending fixture out of a thin piece of metal, a vise, and a block of wood. We want to bend the tab about one millimeter from the package edge, using the thin metal piece as a fulcrum for leverage. Keeping the bending stress away from the package will protect the part of the tab inside the package from stress and give a straight parallel bend. We'll line up everything first, with the brace behind the tab and the package marking surface facing up. Then we'll tape it so that nothing shifts as we move it to the vise and clamp it. Once in the vise, make sure the part is parallel to the vise jaws and that the top of the brace is about 1.5 millimeters above the jaws minimum. By using the wooden block to apply force instead of fingers, we can help make sure the tab bends evenly and we also spread the pressure uniformly across the plastic package. We want to bend almost but not quite 90 degrees so that there will be a tiny bit of spring left to ensure good contact with the heat sink but not enough to stress the part. That's the result we want. It's flat in both planes, almost 90 degrees. We've done a good job cleaning up the pads and holes. The part should fit easily and have some play so we can adjust it to match its partner. I like to first tack a lead on one end with solder, then remelt it to adjust until it's just right. The shoulders on the leads should determine the depth, so we only really need to adjust angle.
Then with the board turned over, I start at the opposite end of the tacked lead and work my way back. After all the leads are soldered, all that's needed is to apply new thermal paste and reassemble. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you'd like to see more videos on a particular subject, let me know in the comments. Thanks for listening.